Francis, you are in a damp small cellar with a dirt floor, just a few paces from wall to wall. The smell of sweat and mold is heavy around you. There's no windows and you see no way out. On the walls, torches are lit. And in the middle you see Sarah kneeling, one of the members in your Bible study group. You try to move, but you can't. You are frozen in place. Sarah is naked. Her hands are tied behind her back, and her legs are wrapped with barbed wire, to the point where she can't move at all without them cutting deeper into her flesh. You see a man coming up behind her, also naked. It's you, but at the same time it's not. He looks straight at you, then down at Sarah. He had a wooden mask in his hand. You can see small needles on the inside of it. There are holes for the eyes and the mouth, but that's all. It also had another part for the back of the head, also with small needles on the inside. The two parts are connected with leather straps. He plays the back plate at the back of Sarah's head and the mask over her face and presses them together. She scream. As he tightens on the straps, blood flows from under the mask. He takes one step back, watching his work. Then he picks up a large metal spike and a hammer. He places it on Sarah's head and the hammer falls. Her eyes go blank and you fall down on your knees. The darkness takes you away. So, this is the one. Dan, can you hear me, Dan? I know so much more now than I have heard. We wanted you to show us the way. Now you let us there. You and that fat Skidberg. You're not quite as mad as we thought, but you will be if you get out from the woods. And we'll be waiting. Not only for you, Dan, for your loved one as well. Sweet as honey, soft as silk. Bring her head and join the feast. Sing our hymn, lead our dance. Make the world a falling trance. Ecstatic flesh, blood will flow. Taste the fluid, embrace the past. The angel dance with you in hand. Give your love to his caress. The firstborn one from her womb. The one beside, the one desire. As you lie, as you die, her hand in yours. Your soul will break and it will be done. So, this is the one I have her. But you will bring her to us, Dan. You wake up with damp clothes. The smell of swamp and mud welcomes you. The forest is dark and you can see a green glow in the sky over the trees. The sun is almost gone and soon, very soon, it will be darker. Insects buzz and feed on your flesh. And now it's you. Makes this feel like hell. Your whole body start to itch. An itch that is impossible to scratch. The damp smell bears a sense of swamp water. Somewhere in the distance an owl can be heard. To the left, out in the small forest lake, a large splash is heard, but you see nothing. To the right and all around, a marshland as far as you can see. Fur and few pine trees covered with moss near the ground all around. Here and there a few birch trees can be seen, not many. Many of the trees are dead and the ground is covered with moss-like tufts. Your hand sinks down, almost a feet in the warm water around the tufts as you push yourself up. The air is warm, but now and then you feel a cold breeze from the lake. Mushrooms can be seen here and there, death caps and other unknown ones. There's a lot of fungus and lichen on the trees. 
Something crawls through a juniper bush next to you and slides down the lake water. Maybe a snake. But at first sight it felt too big for that. You never saw it clearly. Then you find Francis next to you. Not fully awake yet. There's no sign of Wiki. What do you do? I am looking around at this new landscape. And Francis is there. No, Vicky. Where's Vicky? I will yell. Vicky! Francis! Yeah, um... Uh, uh, it's just, I feel so parched. Um, what... What happened to us? I don't know. You both have uh, the gray clothes from the Institute. Why am I wearing this? Hey. Where's Vicky? Vicky. Didn't she come through with us? She came I, through with us. Uh, well, she's... I mean, the impossibility of where we are right now. I mean, I just, can anything make sense anymore? I. Uh, why don't you hold my hand? Let's, uh... Maybe we could pray to God and... Well, hopefully... Francis, hopefully can... just... Would you just... Go ahead and pray. Are you not the praying sort? No. Have you not seen some of the things that we've seen lately? I think... You were a dead man, Francis. That would mean you're in hell. No, um... There's many, many stories in the Bible of, of surviving and, and coming back from the death. Lazarus, I don't yeah. know how you can see the things that we've seen and not believe in God. If, if there's no God and that is all there is, then... What's the point of everything? Just pray, Francis. I'm going to kind of look around the landscape. Does it look like there's traffic of any sort? Foot traffic, people, paths? Do I no. see anything? It looks like wilderness. You see no signs of any human. You hear uh, animals in the distance, but that is all. There's a lot of insects. They are really pain in the ass. The hell are we doing here? It's very hot, even for uh, evening. The air is uh, damp and hot, and it's slowly getting darker and darker. But you, you see, you see pretty well the green glow in the sky. Uh, makes you see far away, even in the darkness. Why don't come, come on? Uh... You need to. Pray for someone to deal with these mosquitoes. Jesus, see the size of that thing. Just, uh, you know, Lord, Lord, Lord God, it's, just, um, it's a difficult time. Please guide us. Let's guide Jesus through the desert. I know you're there. I know you're watching out for us. Amen. Do you think Amen. that green light is a sign from God? Well, if it's anything like literature it's that green light just across the the water that that thing that uh keeps us going despite the waves beating us back i think it's a good idea to go forward anyway towards it it's the best we have it, at least all right let's are you, are you okay are you hurt um and francis will pat himself down and uh, comb his hair back, except for maybe a bruise here or there, but I, I feel fine. You both feel strangely composed, as if you have had a good night's sleep almost. But the dampness and the wetness around you and the insect are bugging you really, really much. Yeah, let's um, let's get out of here. I, just, I was never really a outdoorsman type of guy. No, uh, me neither, and I'm anxious to get moving. I'm also looking around for any signs as Vicky might have, like, woke up before and left. You can uh, roll for observe a situation. Perception. Perception. Uh, 13. As you look around, you see, uh, and as you stand up, uh, you notice that uh, you don't leave any trail after you, any tracks. The wet ground and the water hides them right away. 
I'm going to go right to the top of the list. What is uh, our best way through this? Seems to be to the south, you think, away from the the lake. It seems like there more uh, ground there that isn't uh, wet. All right, come on, Francis. We got to let's get away from the wet first of all. That's where all the insects are. We got to we got to get to high dry ground. Yeah, that's that sounds good. Uh, should we fill our time walking with uh, awkward conversation or just want to be quiet? <sighs> Francis, sorry. My my mind is occupied with Vicky and everything that's going on. Um, I'm confused. I don't, I don't mean to take it out on you. This this might be weird to say, and I hope you don't take it the wrong way. But um, I mean, look at the clothes that we have on. There's no sign of this Nikki. We don't know how we got out here. Do you think maybe maybe Nikki is not not real? I don't know. But what's real and what's not real, I can't even define real anymore. You're right. I, I don't know if we are where it seems like we are or me and you are drugged up in straight jackets and padded rooms somewhere. Because I've, I've been riding this ride for a while, man. And uh, <laughs> yeah, what's real, what's not. I don't know. I could blink my eyes and be driving down the middle of a desert. That's how this whole thing started. I guess let's uh, walk on and maybe one of the times we blink, we'll back home. I hope so. Francis, you you also remember that cellar with the tank and uh, Dr. Hall getting mad at someone as you threw yourself away from him. Francis will rub his head and, you know, there's some things ruminating in my mind and at times they, they feel like a nightmare or... But honestly, they, they can't be real. And I, I say that in a sense that it can't hurt me right here and now. So you see a dark shadow behind a pine tree, maybe five paces ahead of you. And you hear a woman's voice sobbing for a while. <laughs> It's too dark. My eyes. He took my eyes. You're standing completely still. It's silent again. N- Nikki? Who was that? I don't... We... we isn't... I mean... We're, uh, let's... Uh, and, and he'll start just heading towards uh, the sound uh, in a, a brisk jog. Man, just be careful. Hang on. I'm going to follow... Not mm. quite as fast. Uh, you come up to the to the tree where you saw the movement, Francis. As you look around it, there's there's no one there. Is it Vicky? I there's no one here. That I, I could have sworn there was there was this crying and, and a talk of eyes and sight. Yeah, yeah, I heard it too. I said they took her eyes out. Yes. Did you recognize the voice? <sighs> Can't, I can't seem to place it. Maybe... Uh, Sarah? I... Uh, that's... I... It must just be something that has passed on from the nightmare I was having. If we just press forward, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just... I, I'm dehydrated or something. Who's Sarah? A young woman in, in, in my Bible study. I don't know why she would be here. It doesn't make sense. Let's just forget about it. I just nightmares and you know we're we're spooking ourselves out here. Right. Right. Did 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 it sound like her? I think it did. A woman's scream echoes through the war forest, then the, silence. The fuck it sounds that? like uh, Vicky. Vicky! Did you hear that? Wait, uh is it Vicky or Nikki? Oh, Nikki? Uh, Nikki? Who the fuck is Nikki? Oh, no, it's just... Oh, man. Can I tell What's... what direction it came from? From the lake, you think? Look, I... um, I don't think we should be following these voices. I, I think they're like siren calls, you know, 
bits of, of the devil's whispers. Uh, so oh, for from- God's sakes, Francis, if that was Vicky and she's being hurt, I have to go back. She's like my little sister. What if it's not? And what if you're just going towards something that will prevent you from seeing her ever again? Dan stops and kind of spreads his arms out like he's demanding silence. I want to listen and see if I hear it again. Yeah, you hear it uh, maybe after a minute or so. And uh, in the scream you hear, (laughs) That sounds like fucking Vicky. I know it sounds like it, but it might not be her. And what if it is? We ran here because I thought I heard Sarah, and Sarah's not here. We're alone, Dan. But Vicky is supposed to be with us. Sarah is not. How can we be sure of that? You said we could wake up and we could be in a car. Well, that's true. I don't know what to do. Let's go. You followed me when I went in search of Sarah. I I, I think I at least owe you that. I can't lose Vicky. I can't be responsible for her death. Losing is a, it comes with the presumption that we have any sense of control. Your heart ache when you hear another scream. It's definitely wicked. Uh, it sounds like she's panicking. Nah, fuck that. That that's completely different than what I heard last time. This is Vicky. This is real. She's being hurt. She's supposed to be here. She walked through with us. Something has happened. We got to go back. All right, let's go. You get back to the lake, it takes you a few minutes. It has been silent all the time as you walk back. On the other side of the lake, it's maybe 100 meters across, it's just a small forest lake. On the other side you see a cabin, an old cabin. And as you see it, you hear something from the cabin. A woman scream. You're not sure if it's wiki or not. What the fuck? As you get closer to the cabin, you notice that it has no door and the windows are all broken. It's a ruin with the red wooden walls, but the color has faded over the years. There seems to be only one floor and it's not very big. An old chimney have collapsed on the roof that is covered in grass and weed. A rotten wooden stair leads up to the doorway. The house is on stone foundation and there seems to be a cellar under it. On the side there's a hatch that probably leads down to it. What do you do? Listen. Silence. Vicky? Uh, There's no answer. Francis, I hope you're not right. I really hope you're not right. I think if I'm right or not, we're in God's hands. Now I'm really scared. Open up the cellar door. The cellar door is locked with a chain, an old rusty chain and padlock. So I'm going to need to find uh, uh, like a, a something, a tool or a pry bar or something. The door uh, to the cabin is, uh, is open. I'm going to go look around, Francis, see if I can find something to open this thing up with. You want me to stay here by myself? Uh, yeah, you can come with me if you want. Yeah, let's go. I walk around to the front of the cabin to look in. There's just one large room inside the cabin. You see the wallpaper have curled up here and there. Uh, you see bunk beds along the left and right walls still standing. Uh, the smell of moist mold is heavy here. There are a few rugs on the floor. You see broken furnitures and wood all around. The window at the front wall moves in the wind and a bit of glass falls down from it. In the back window, in the opposite wall, you suddenly see a face on the outside, looking in. You're still uh, outside the cabin as you see it. A young woman, pale skin, and bleeding holes where her eyes should be. And I want you both to roll Keep It Together. I roll a three. Ooh, fifteen. Dan, you... You're really scared now. We were friends. Why, why, why won't he come and get me? I'm scared. She slides down from the window as if she was holding herself up to it with her hands. And is gone. Uh. Dan, you're frozen in the fear and you can lower your stability by two. 
On the inside of the cabin, you see on a small table next to one of the beds, Francis, you see an eye. The eye is dried up, but strangely preserved. At first you didn't understand what it was, but now you see it's it's a human eye. Sarah? Francis will, will step in and, and head towards this eye. Dan's not moving. Dan, you see a rusty old X uh, inside the cabin on the left wall. It's, uh, it's leaning against the wall there. Ingo. Um, yeah, in a frantic movement, I'm going to get in, grab it, get out. As you grab it and turn around to get out, uh, just as uh, Francis is uh, at the table, the young woman stands in the doorway to the cabin. She's naked, pale, uh. and she moves her head back and forth in jerky motions. Somewhere far away, you hear a flute play a sad melody. The woman turn around and walk away with the same jerky motions. She disappear among the trees and the melody fades away. You start to breathe again, Dan, and you can tell me what you do. I've got the axe up. Uh, I was just about to go use it on her. She went away. Gripping my axe, it gives me comfort in this moment. Francis, what do you do? Walking towards the eye, did he see this uh, apparition of sorts? You can roll uh, perception. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, just looking back at Dan holding on to this newfound weapon. Dan, are, are you okay? Uh, is... it's, it's, it's gone now. What was it? Who's that girl? She, she's a friend, I'm sure. Are you sure you should have a weapon? I'm going to turn my head away from the door slowly towards Francis, because what he said piques my curiosity. Do I notice the eyeball? Yeah, you do. What are you talking about, Francis? Hey, don't, don't take this the wrong way. But weren't you in an institute? I don't know if we want to complicate things with... With weapons. I think I'm fine. What's with the eyeball there, Francis? Francis will turn and attempt to pick up this orb on the table. It's dry. I, I think it's... really old. I think it might be one of those, um, you know, glass eyes that you, you put in your eye socket. Uh, he'll kind of lightly toss it over to Dan. Dan and does not catch it. It falls down to the floor and bounces a few times and comes to a stop at the table again on the floor. That did not sound like a glass eye. It uh, maybe a rubber eye or, or something like that is. Um, Come on, let's go check out the cellar. All right. Um, he'll bend down and kind of pocket the glass eye as he views it. You walk outside uh, up to the, the cellar door on the outside. X at the ready. Yeah, and you can tell Francis is, is looking at Dan. Uh, he looks pretty uncomfortable with him now. When I get to the cellar door, I'm going to just chop down on the lock or chain or whatever weak spot I see. Uh, you can roll uh, act under pressure. Act on, oh, that's good. I rolled a 16 before I even... No, I got a zero anyways on coolness. So 16. Yeah, uh, you smack down with the X on the padlock and it, uh, it breaks right away and falls to the side. You can open the hatch. I fling it open quickly. You look All down, right. uh, uh, it's a wooden stairway that leads down and you see someone in the middle of the cellar kneeling, uh, but it's too dark to make out. After a while, your eyes start to focus and you, you can see a little better in the darkness. The cellar is damp. There are spider webs in the ceiling and in the corners. The floor is made of dirt and there's mud here and there. Vicky sits in the middle of the room, kneeling, looking straight ahead with large eyes. A wooden mask. Rotten now is half buried in the dirt in front of her. On the ground around her, you see seven wooden boxes with sliding lids. 
Some are half buried, but moss just lies there, spread around her. The boxes are rotten, wet and slimy. Vicky holds one box in her hands, playing with the lid, humming. She doesn't seem to have noticed you at all. That's... <sighs> Francis, it's that seller you saw in your dream or whatever it was with Sarah. Is, is this uh, Nikki? It's Vicky. Gosh. Vicky. Are you sure this is real? No. Vicky, where is Sarah? She's just looking straight ahead, humming. Francis will take a few steps forward and crouch in front of her, trying to look her in the eye. She's looking uh, straight at you, but uh, through you. She doesn't see you. Vicky, where is Sarah? The lid uh, on the box she have in her hands open, and you see uh, a human finger dried up but strangely preserved in the box. He... Vicky! Where is Sarah? And he'll, he'll put his hands upon her, her shoulders and start shaking her. I will intervene. Where is she? Get off her. She's obviously something wrong. Vicky, are you okay? She's just humming. This isn't right. Francis will get up and in a panic look around. Sarah! There's no one else there. I had a dream she was here. And what is this finger? Look through Vicky. the other boxes, Dan does. You pick up uh, one of the other seven boxes and open it. You see uh, a human tongue, dried up, strangely preserved though. Old, very old. Who is this Sarah? She, just, just in my Bible study, is someone I look after. You said you dreamed about her here? Yes. And he'll take out the eyeball and look at it and does it does it look like Sarah's? You can't really tell. It's so dried up that you see no color. Dan holds up the dried tongue for Francis to see. Fuck. If this is Sarah. It's not. It's not Sarah. There are six more boxes on the ground around Wiki. You see, Vicky have uh, picked up the dried finger from the box, and now she's playing with the finger and have dropped the box. <laughs> Francis will, will will go towards the boxes and, in a rush, kind of flip open the, the the tops to see what they contain. The first one is a ear, a dried up ear. The second one is. A, you can't really make out what it is at first. Oh, no. It's uh, some kind of flesh. It's a piece of... It's a fucking clitoris. Oh, no, 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 no. The next one, uh, you find a dried up nipple. Then a nose. A toe. And lastly, another eye. God damn it! <sighs> and Francis will grab onto um, Vicky and, and shake her and, and and smack her in the face. Yeah, what do you do, Dan? I'm not going to let him do that. I will just, like, try to get my way in. I'm not a violent person. I'm not going to use the axe, but I will try to squeeze in between them. Wanna, and, like, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing? Leave her alone! You want to get in the way. Yes. Uh, I, I want you to roll for uh, violence anyway. Violence. Uh, ten. You, you get in the way, but uh, Francis gets one, uh, one hit in before you're there. But then you can stop him. Vicky doesn't seem to know what's going on. God damn it. She must have done something. She didn't do this. She's here. But Just look at her. Yeah, she's here. Look at her. She didn't do this. God. Oh God. Uh. I'm like inspecting Vicky to make sure she has her eyes and her ears. I assume if I see yeah. those that the other parts are there as well. 
It's all there. Vicky, can you hear me? Vicky, is it you? She's looking at you, but uh, she doesn't see you. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> I don't know what, what... I don't know what to do. I don't know what comes next. I am so sorry, Sarah. We don't... We don't know that that's Sarah. What else could it be? I had that dream. It's God warning me. Oh, I should never have have cared. I don't know what to do, Dan. We're going to get Vicky, and we're going to get the fuck out of here is what we're going to do. What is here? What has happened? Why does she have boxes around her? I don't know. I don't know. What's the point of any of this? Come on, Vicky. Come on, Vicky. You got to get up. Let's go. She stands up, but she doesn't move. Looking in her eyes, knowing, I know, I understand she's messed up, but does, does it look like it's really my Vicky? Yeah, you can, you can roll intuition. Intuition, uh, 11. You are sure that it's, it's uh, Vicky and you can ask one question. I'm going to go with the, what are you about to do? Is there an action coming? Uh, she seems uh, apathetic. Uh, completely calm uh, other than the humming and uh, sometimes a small cry but you don't think she's gonna do anything you may be able to lead her she stood up when you said we're gonna leave all right then uh, that's about as reassuring as i can get so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna lead her out come on francis let's get the fuck out of this place the door closes with a bang and it's completely dark around you and Francis, fuck! Where, where, where's Vicky? You hear her next to you. Take her hand. Sarah. Francis, come on over here, close. Can I sort of inch my way towards where I think the stairs are? Uh, it's just a few, few steps from where you are, so you, you find the stairs almost uh, right away. I'm gonna pull Vicky. Francis, yeah. I found the stairs. I'm going up. Crawl up the stairs. Push the door open. No problem. There's no one outside. Maybe maybe it was the wind or something, but you don't feel any wind, really. All right. Come on. Come on, Vicky. Francis, come on. It's all right. Everything's fine. Might have, I don't know what it was. The gust of wind. All right. Uh, and he'll collect, like, each bit of whatever this is and put it in, in one of the boxes or, or in, his, in his coat and, and go up the stairs. Yeah. Did you want to look inside again? Yeah. She has to be she has to be nearby. Um you know this 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 must be Eden. Two two men, uh two two women. Um, what are you talking? Francis new beginning uh, certainly. Oh my god. I'm going to sort of just look Vicky over while Francis is rambling. Sort of wipe some of the dirt from her face and make sure she's not injured while I'm out here in the nightlight. She seems okay, and you, you notice that she have that uh, wooden mask in her hand now that she's standing outside the cellar. Vicky, what, what is this? Uh, I'll she lifts it up to you. Take it from her if I can. You notice that the inside of the mask have uh, small needles uh, pointing inwards, very sharp ones. She just looks at you with dead eyes, and she starts to hum again. I just throw it towards the cabin. Come on, let's get out of here. Francis, what do you do? Francis looks over at the, ma uh, the mask and will walk towards it to pick it up. It's that mask. That can't be good, Francis. Look at that thing. If if there is a god, then this is just a part of his plan. What are you talking about? I, you're sounding more crazy than I am, Francis. God damn. <sighs> it makes sense. I mean, look at, look at this place. What makes more sense? That we're in some weird forest. Strange things are happening. Or... Or that this all has an intelligent design. How does the mask fit into it? This is biblical. You do see that there's 
like nails or needles or something on the inside of that thing, right? Those little bitty spikes. It's not good to put on. Masks in throughout history have been have been a reflection of the inner soul. I think I I don't know what I think. I think you sound crazier than I am. And he, he takes the mask and smells it to, to see if it smells like her. It smells of uh, the dirt and the mud, rotten wood. Sarah. And he'll press his face gently into the mask. You feel the points of the needles that penetrate your skin very, very lightly. They are so sharp that it uh, doesn't hurt at first, but more of an itch. Then the pain starts to flow through your face. The fuck are you doing, Francis? Put that thing down! Oh, God, yes. (sighs) He'll open his eyes and and look around through the, the holes of the mask. You see Dan look at you. Wide eyes. I'm still freaked out from everything that's happening. I mean, I'm a, I'm just a step away from losing it, practically. Sarah. It feels uh, really strange. Oh, yes. Sarah. You get no answer, but you're starting to feel ecstatic. You want to press the mask towards your face, and I want you to roll willpower. All right. Eleven. Uh, with a, an 11, you, you can choose if you, if you press it further or if you let it go. I'm going to press it further. Dan, you see Francis is pushing the mask towards his face and you see a drip of blood start to form on his chin. What do you do, Dan? I'm standing there holding Vicky's hand, staring wide-eyed at what this idiot is doing. Francis, you, you hear Dan, but uh, at the same time you feel you feel really ecstatic and it feels wonderful, almost like sex. Dan, uh, hold my hand. I, I, I think we can pray with this. I feel some sort of connection, warmth to something more outside myself. Hold my hand, Dan. Come. I don't. <laughs> now you're mine. Sarah? Sarah, where are you? He'll look around. There's no one there. He'll touch his face and, uh, and, and try to pull the mask off. Yeah, no problem. You don't feel ecstatic anymore. It went away uh, as you heard the voice in your head. You just feel afraid now. Dan. What are you doing? I don't know what's happening, all right? You have this air of confidence or, or maybe even weakness, pain. You you belong here. You understand what is happening and I, I need you to, to tell me, what is all this? I don't understand anything that's happening, Francis. I'm trying to figure it out. Who was that doctor? I don't know. Who's Vicky? Why is she here? Vicky is my friend. I think she's here because of me. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why I'm messing with you at all. When did this start? When did you start seeing things? Why were you in an institute? I don't know, Francis. That's that's what I'm trying to figure out. All of this crazy shit started happening to me because of... The work that I do on the computer, I saw some science experiment go crazy somewhere up north, and then my life goes absolutely haywire. Get up, go to coffee, and then wake up, drive into the desert? I don't know. I didn't choose any of this. You're not a God-fearing man? No, and I don't believe in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. Okay, it's not the same. Look, I need to get a handle of this. And the only way I know how is to pray. And I need you to be a part of that process. You and Vicky. I'll support you, Francis. I don't know what Vicky's doing right now. I'm, do you see the state she's in? I've not seen her like this before. Okay. I, I think I She can shouldn't be... even be here. This is my fault that she's even involved in this. 
I think I can help. Just bring her over here. Let's let's take each other's hands, form a circle, and get on our knees. I look at him like, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. We're dealing with things outside ourselves, and we need help. All right, and if it will help move things along. Good. I'll Good. pull Vicky over and placate Francis for the moment. Francis will take their hands. <clears throat> Dear, dear Father, who art in heaven, I'll be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as is in eternity. Lord, guide us, help us, save us. And as he's doing this, um, he's going to try to help Vicky with my uh, with his advantage, lay on hands, to yeah. see if it'll work. It, he doesn't really know if, if what's plaguing her is physical or mental, but he will try to take on as much burden as he can for her. You do it and you, you feel that you take on something, but it's, uh, it's no injury, no wounds, and uh, she doesn't seem to change at all. Lord, we are in your hands. Guide our steps. Amen. But she looks at you suddenly, Francis, and she starts to mumble a little louder. And after a while, you hear her trying to talk over you with blah, 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 and when you become silent, she does as well. And she smiles at you. Everything's going to be okay. Everything will be okay. Francis gets up and pats his pants and looks around. Thank you, Dan. I know it was weird, but it helped me. And uh, there's just something in Vicky. I could feel it. It feels like it's inside me, too. I don't know how to help her. Dan looks suspiciously at this whole situation. Vicky turns uh, to look at you, Dan, and she still have uh, those dead eyes and seems to look through you or past you. And suddenly she opens her mouth. No! You can't do this to me! Don't make me here! Then she looks straight ahead again. Apathetic. You see uh, her eyes uh, start to go back and forth in her head fast. Then they roll up and you only see the whites. And she tries to kiss you. What do you do? I hold her away. I know that's not her. She's like my little sister. And I'm starting to feel like she's not quite herself. In the most extreme sense of that phrase. You hear that voice again from her. The cabin. This is where I died. What are you, Vicky? What's inside of you? Vicky falls to the ground, unconscious. Who I is knew. this Sarah person? What? Someone I look out for. I just, I dreamed of her. And looking at the cabin, Francis is going to whisper a prayer to God. Let me see through. Let me see through. And he'll try to pierce the illusion. You notice the, the naked, pale woman. She's standing 30 feet in front of you in the darkness by the lake. She's looking at you. Dan, you don't see her at first, but uh, you see that the Francis is looking at something. And when you turn to look at the lake, you see the woman as well. And she starts to run towards you, screaming, the hands outstretched in front of her. She's coming fast. What do you do? I'm grabbing Vicky. Run. It seems like she's attacking. What do you do, Francis? He's going to take out uh, his cross and say, Back, if you are of the of devil, you have to do as I say. I am the Lord's servant. And she's upon you. Dan, Fra you can roll, act under pressure. Francis. Eight. You pick up Vicky and you start to run. She's... Uh, She's dead weight to you, and uh, you, you uh, run two steps, then you fall down uh, from her weight. And you see uh, this uh, naked, pale woman throw herself over Francis. Francis, I want you to roll Avoid Harm. She throws herself over you. you. You sense and you feel her claws. I want you to roll Endure Injury with a minus two. 
you feel uh, you feel the claws uh, they are scratching your skin there's no deep wounds and you don't get any serious injury or something but it hurts as she rips your skin open you start to bleed and you start to fall under her with her above you dan what do you do um having fallen down with vicky and now seeing francis uh, i'm i'm going to go try to help francis yeah you have your ex then i'm swinging for the center of her back you can roll violence come on dan do something 12 uh you hit her and you inflict damage the ex is uh, buried in her back she doesn't move she doesn't even scream or anything and her hand comes down towards Francis. The X is uh, kind of stuck inside of her. Francis, what do you do? Does she look familiar in any way? No, you have never seen this woman before. He will try to get up pressing uh, his cross uh, against her uh, as a sort of barrier uh, pushing against her. As you are uh, pushing up and uh, you get her away from you, but at the same time, one of her clawed hands hits you and uh, it's uh, just like before she she scratches you but it's uh, it's nothing serious and she falls back and then uh, you have to roll act under pressure to keep your ex eight <laughs> you drop the ex and she falls down next to you dan and as she hits the ground she dissipates in millions and millions of insects that flies away all around you eh. Oh my god. It's like the plagues. The locusts. Where do we go from here? What do we do? I don't know. Let's get away from this lake, though. All right. (sighs) Francis will get up and kiss his cross before pocketing it. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. He looks down at the wounds he he has, and (sighs) I think God's still looking out for me. How is Vicky? She's starting to wake up, but... uh... She doesn't seem to be aware of what's going on around her now. She's back to uh, as she was when you first found her. Humming. Take Vicky's hand. All right, Francis, let's get the fuck out of here. You don't have to tell me twice. Maybe you do. Uh, Regardless, let's go. Axe in hand and Vicky and my other, I'm going to lead him into the forest. You start to walk, and uh, you walk through the forest, maybe an hour, and it's uh, it's starting to get a little bit brighter as you leave the marshland, uh, but it's still dark. And after uh, one hour, maybe two, you find a dirt road, and there's lights up ahead, and a gate that leads up to a house. The gate is large, of black painted iron. A stone wall goes up around the large private area around the house. On the driveway up to the house, there's a lot of cars. The lights you saw is garden lights and lamps on the side of the driveway. There seems to be a party going on. On the side of the gate, there's a buzzer and a speaker. You also notice a camera above on the side of the gate. What do you do? Well, this looks like civilization. Yeah, it does. Maybe some food and rest would do us good. Maybe there's a doctor for uh, Vicky. Yeah, uh, somebody can tell us how to get the hell out of here. These people got to go to town to get groceries, right? Hit the buzzer. You hear a voice of a woman. She sounds drunk. Hello? Uh, we need some help. Can you let us in? Who? Who is this? Is it the stripper? No. You hear another voice in the background. Shh, this is what I'm saying. Sorry, but 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 who is this again? We're lost. We need help. Uh, we need medical attention. The gate opens. All right. Well, let's do this. Uh, it's a large house with a swimming pool in the back, and uh, there are maybe twenty people there. Uh, young people, they are around 20 years old, and uh, they are very drunk, and uh, you soon understand that uh, there's no parents around. The house is uh, very, very large. There are at least 10 cars in the driveway. 
Excellent. Maybe we can inquire about borrowing one of these or someone could drop us off at a hospital. A girl meets up with you as you come up through the driveway. Hello, my, my name is Sophia. Who are you? You said you needed help. My name's Dan. My friend Francis here has been injured. He needs, do you have some first aid, a uh, phone yeah. perhaps? Yeah, inside the house. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. There's a phone inside the house. I, I'll show you. And she screams right. something to the back in Swedish to the others and she get a, a lot of answers and laughters and things. And she opens a side door to the house and leads you in into a kitchen. She tells you to sit down by the table and after a while she, she have a first first aid kit that she br- brings to you. Oh, excellent. And she points at the phone on the wall. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, what, my, what's your name? Sophia. Sophia, can yeah. I ask you, you're probably going to think this is a silly question, and I apologize <laughs> if it sounds strange, but can you tell us where we are? You don't know where you are. Yeah, you, see, you, that's, that's the sounding strange part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in Jervaskogen. What? Jervaskogen. Where is that? that? I have never heard of that town. In... <laughs> where, where are you from? Uh, America? Uh, uh, but you're but <laughs> you're in Sweden. No, I'm not. Uh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. I I can't be in Sweden. Yes, That's... you are. <laughs> what do you mean you're not? Dan, uh, uh, say you, something, do... Dan. I... <laughs> she she is pretty drunk as well. You want something to drink? Maybe if we have a barbecue. Uh, do you want me to get something for you? Um, I'm going to get something for you. you. Just wait there. I'll be okay, right back. Okay, yeah. And she runs out the back. Leaves you alone in the kitchen. Dan, why are we in Sweden? We're not in Sweden. This can't... I don't know. This has something... This is This is where it happened. What? What happened? The... What I saw... What did you see? I don't answer that. And I'm also thinking about Uncle Edward and our location. I, I, I don't think this is good, Francis. I, I don't know how we got here. All right. Uh, well, okay. Uh, we're not in Sweden, obviously. Um, where, where are you from? I'm from Jersey City. All right. Maybe uh, we drove and we're in the Midwest. Right? It's Midwest has always been a little uh, like this, I think. Listen, uh, I need to uh, I need to find a computer. And that phone, too. There's a phone yeah. on the wall. I don't even know who to call on that phone. <sighs> Excellent. Uh, and, and Francis will get on and call 911. <laughs> There's no connection. You dial 911. Nothing happens. Ugh. Crap. Maybe, um... <sighs> Where's Sophia? Because the phone's not working. I don't know. She said she'd be back in a minute. Um, wait here. Stay with Vicky. I'm going to go uh, All right. around. Dan, uh, the kitchen is uh, located next to a large living area with a staircase that uh, goes up to the second floor. Uh, you see a large TV and sound equipment in the living area. It's very nice. You see no computer. Where do you go? No, but if they've got nice stuff, chances are they are connected. Let's go upstairs. You get uh, to the second floor and uh, you you even see that the stairway uh, continues to a third floor as well. And uh, on the second floor, uh, there's a long hallway and you see at least 10 doors up there. And uh, one of the doors uh, next to the stair is open. It's a girl's room and you see a computer in that room. It's on. On the screen, you see a Facebook page. What is the Facebook page? Uh, it says uh, Anna, Anna's Facebook page. Anna Blomberg or something like that. There's a lot of pictures from, from the party below, you think. New pictures. I'm going to scan that for anything that seems to make sense to me. You also see uh, the date on the computer. It's July the 15th. 
you thought it was maybe July the 12th or something like that. But uh, just yesterday, you also thought it was uh, December. So who knows? Shake my head, trying to find out where I am in relationship to everything. You know that you will need to download a few uh, programs and a few scripts and things like that to access the dark web. But you know how to do it, so you start to do that. Francis, the girl, uh, comes in again with a a few beer bottles and uh, uh, barbecue meat and salad and potatoes that she uh, puts on the table. Uh, uh, Thank you. Where's that other, other guy? Uh, he, um, went to go check on something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your phone doesn't work. What do you mean? doesn't work. I, I called 911 and I, it, it doesn't... <laughs> you uh... can't call 911 there. <laughs> what, oh what's you, the, what's the emergency number then? It's, it's 112, but why, what, do you need help? Yes, I don't know why I'm here. I need to get back to America. I I've yeah, seen things yeah. and I'm tired and uh, well well it's it's 112 but but I don't want you to call that. They go they just going to destroy the party and uh, there's there's a lot of young people here. So you you can call 112. We can help you. Uh, what do you want help with? I want to get home. Uh, okay. Uh, Patrick is going to town tomorrow. You can uh, Catch your ride with him. All right, that's fair. Um, okay, uh, that's beer, right? Uh, that yeah. looks good. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, hi, I'm I'm Francis Francis Tooley. By the way, I'm a I'm a pastor uh, in America. Uh, Sophia, Sophia Val. <laughs> Very beautiful name. I, I, I'm not religious. That's that's fine. I uh, you know <laughs> yeah. to, to each his own. Yeah. Yeah. You you probably wanna. Uh, let me see if I can find any any uh, clean clothes. I think my oh, brother yeah, has that something. Actually, that, that'd be great. Yeah. I must look like a mess. <laughs> yeah, you all do. Uh, what's wrong with the girl? We we've we've been through a lot, and I she's not taking it as 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 well as the rest of us. Is she drunk? No, she's not drunk. Just uh, sick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, that's that's why we need to to get to town to see a doctor or, or something. Uh, so so that's why you want to call one one two. Yeah, uh, I understand. Oh, well, do do you think uh, do you think we have to? I think so. I I mean, un- unless yeah, you can drop man. us off tomorrow, we can wait. Yeah, we we can drop you off tomorrow if it's uh, if okay. it's not an emergency. Yeah, I don't think it is. Ah, okay, um, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna uh, go and check uh, in my brother's room for some clothes. I, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Go Thank ahead you. and eat. Uh, it's All reindeer. Right. It's reindeer meat. It's good. I've never had reindeer meat before, but yeah, sure. I'll, I'll try anything once yeah. or twice. She walks away and leave you alone. Kind of lean against the wall and try this reindeer meat with whatever drink she brought. Some kind of beer. You see, it's a it's a Swedish label. You taste the meat, and it's uh, it's pretty good. A little bit salty, but very very good. All right. Damn! Uh, you have downloaded a few files and some software, and you start to poke around. What do you look for? I am first interested in exactly on the map where I am, and then I'm going to look at where that is in relation to the location of the event that I witnessed. You notice that you're you're in a forest uh, called uh, Jarba Skogen. It's uh, maybe 30 minutes from the nearest town. Uh, The town is named Kiruna. It's a mining town, an old mining town. And uh, just north of uh, that town, maybe two or three hours north, and then uh, another hour into the wilderness to the uh, east of it is that location. So you are maybe four or five hours south of that location. That actually makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. I was assuming it was right around the block. Now, then the next thing I probably will have to roll for, because now I'm going to to see if I can find us a way home. You can roll excess 
the dark net. Twelve. You find out that there's a woman up north, not far from the actual site, that uh, is said to have second sight. Kind of a nature witch named Jacqueline. Somehow she seems to have something to do with an, a man named Edvard Gran, your uncle. But at the same time that you are reading this and checking a few things out, it feels like someone is watching you, and I want you to roll keep it together. Yeah. Right. That's a 16. Uh, you don't get affected very much from it. You just feel a little nervous. And you, you seem to see a couple of eyes that are looking out on you from the screen. Then it shuts down and the lights around you are out. The power fails and goes out in the entire house. And from the outside you hear uh, the drunk uh, youth they start to scream and laugh and some of them are starting to complain about something in Swedish and you hear a voice right next to you, Dan. Please, please, light the candle, I, I, I can't see! What do you do? Uh, look around the room, where, where did that come from? You felt it right next to your ear, but there, there's no one there. And you see a girl come up the stair on the outside. She looks at you. Uh, it's uh, the girl that showed you into the kitchen. What uh, What are you doing in Anna's room? Oh, uh, sorry. I I thought maybe it was, couldn't get the phone to work downstairs. I thought I could use the computer here. It was on. <laughs> yeah, he told me. He he, <laughs> he he thinks he's in America. He 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 tried to dial nine one one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, we didn't know. Um, I, I just now realized. <laughs> yeah, Google Maps. Uh, we're we're oh, in Sweden. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, there's food downstairs. Uh, the power went out, but I, I, I'm gonna see if I can fix it. Uh, I, I'm gonna go to my brother's room and see if I can find uh, a few, uh, a little clo uh, clothes All right. for you. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll, yeah. I'll I'll go down and have some food. Thank you uh, for your help. Really, yeah, yeah. Re really appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. I'll go downstairs back to Francis yeah. and the Vicky. And she uh, she walks into another room at the second floor. Francis, what do you do? Francis is sitting there eating and drinking and trying to see if Vicky uh, can eat and drink as well. She's eating and drinking if you if you help her. She won't mm -hmm. do it on her own. Yeah, he'll help her. And you wait for, for Dan or someone else to come back. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, you, you enter the kitchen, you, you see this scene. Is she coming around yet? Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping this helps, though. She's eating. That's good. Oh, is that a beer? It is, yeah. It's, um... Oh, my God. It's different, uh, but it's all right. Uh, I, I don't care what kind of beer it is. and I will crack that bad boy and chug... I'll ask Francis what did what what did you find out about the nine one one situation? Uh, apparently, it's it's like one one two here, but uh, they're gonna they're gonna drive us in the town tomorrow. tomorrow. They don't really want uh, the cops here. I guess they're all uh, underage or something. <sighs> yeah, so maybe we can find a a room that's quiet and just sleep it off until tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. This is crazy, Francis. Um, we're gonna figure this out, man. I've got to figure this out. Do you honestly believe that? Yeah. Uh, I can't can't live the rest of my life getting, you know, strapped to tables and and disappeared off to Sweden with the blink of an eye. What day is it? How 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 much time has passed since I don't know, since things were clear, I wonder. I'm I'm kinda confused about that. From what I saw on the computer, it's it's like we've lost almost a week. All right, let's uh, let's find Sophie, uh, Sophia, and um, uh, let's get a room, I guess. She comes down to you and says that she have prepared a, a room for you. There's only one room, so you have to share the bed, and uh, she have put in a mattress on the floor for one of you. Oh, uh, and there's you. clean clothes there, and you you can take a shower upstairs as well. Oh, uh, yes. If you if you are done, I can show you the room. I think the party is uh, gonna uh, soon wear off or end uh, when there's no power. Yeah. 
I mean, I think we're all pretty tired. If you just show us the room, I'm sure we could take a shower and yeah. get some rest. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, feel free to continue to party on in the dark if you want. Um, don't stop on our account by any means. <laughs> no, I, I, I think they have forgotten you already. <laughs> <laughs> you can party as well if you want to. As much as I'd love to, uh, maybe after I take a shower. It- yeah, yeah, sure, sure. That's okay. Yeah, right. let, let me let me show you the room. And she walks okay. up the stairs and into a, a guest room with a, a large bed, double-sized bed, and a, there's a mattress on the floor, and the clean clothes for all of you. Yeah, Francis will grab some clothes. And Dan, are you okay? I'm just gonna try to get my thoughts back. Maybe some semblance of normalcy. When Francis is done showering, I will shower and change and contemplate all of this information. Yeah, I think Francis uh, afterwards might kind of look out at the the party, and I think I might actually take them up on that offer. Maybe the party is, uh, is still going, and there's uh, a lot of people out by the pool. They have uh, lit uh, candles and uh, lanterns and things like that, and have a fire going. Yeah, Francis so, will head out there and grab himself a drink. Yeah, have a little fun time there before bed. Francis uh, is kind of the odd person at the party. Uh, he doesn't look at ease, but he drinks and kind of sits next to the fire and watches uh, the flames for pretty much the remainder of the night. Uh, I see him falling asleep uh, on the chair itself, kind of slumping into it. Damn. You wake up in the bed. It's not so dark anymore. It's uh, it's not daylight, but it's uh, close to daylight. You feel a presence, a shadow that is moving through the room. It's a shade of a woman. You recognize her from uh, the Christmas party at your house. You notice that uh, Vicky is up from the bed, standing next to the shadow. The shadow walks through the doorway, leading Vicky out. And you hear her whisper Wiki's name. What do you do? I get out of bed and yeah. follow. Francis is uh, it's not on the mattress. The shadow is uh, moving through the house, down the hallway, the stairs, to the front door. Vicky is by her side, led by the ghostly figure. If you try to focus on her, she almost becomes invisible. You have to keep her in the corner of your eye at all time. If you get close to her, she seems to fade away, and so is Vicky. She moves down the driveway to the last car closest to the gate. She moves through it, and so does Vicky. She disappears. The gate swings open. When you get to the car, it's a modern Ford Mustang. You see Vicky in the driver's seat. You also notice that the keys to the car is there. Vicky is holding her pendant in both hands, mumbling something in another language. What do you do? Run to the car. Vicky, can you hear me? What are you doing? She's just looking straight ahead with the, those dead eyes. Look can- up uh, to the house. You see a lonely man sitting in a chair behind the house near the pool. It's Francis. He seems to be asleep. You see no one else around. Vicky, just hold on a second. I'm going to go get Francis. We're going to get out of here. And I will run to where I saw Francis. Uh, You run up to Francis, and as you come up around the corner of the house, you see all the people that were at the party are lying head down in the pool, round. Francis is sleeping in the sun chair. Francis! Keep it together. Francis! Uh, Shit. Six. Francis! You wake up. Come on, we gotta get out of here. God, why? <sighs> Look at the pool. Looks over at the pool. Yeah, and you, you. I want you to roll, keep it together as well. Twelve. Well, uh, you go from uh, a little bit drunk, very sleepy, to uh, completely sober and awake as you see the pool, and you can describe uh, what it does to you, and you can lower your stability by one. Yeah, Francis looks out. I, I was, I was, I, 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 how did I not hear? And he, he rolls back from his chair and like falls onto the grass, getting up. He, he looks at Dan. What happened here? Oh my God. 
Uh, I don't oh, fucking shit. know what happened here. Come on, we gotta go. Okay. And you hear a car start, a muscle car. Oh shit! It, I think he's in the car. Come on. Uh, and he'll start running. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. run to the car. Yeah, you run to the car. Uh, Vic is uh, still in the driver's seat and she seems to have started the car. You, you get up to it. Yeah, I'm going for the driver's side door and just like scooching her over with my... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no problem. You do it. Yeah, Francis uh, kind of slips into the back if possible. Yeah, it's a small back seat, but uh, it's possible. And you start to drive. What happened? Did you see what happened? No, I just woke up. Dear God, what? <sighs> oh, God. Ah, what the fuck is going on? This is... We're cursed. Everyone around us dies. You're out on the dirt road. The forest around you is starting to become dark again. You can't explain it. It was uh, almost uh, morning. It seems even darker as you're in the car now. You don't feel safe at all, but you're on your way. I want you to describe your driving. Do you take it easy or are you going fast? Do you drive in silence or do you talk? I am silent, fast, concentrating yeah. on the road and these, the thoughts, the irrational thoughts that are just, everything's bouncing around in my head right now. Francis is, is in the back kind of holding and uh, manipulating his cross while looking, he continues to look back out the window to see if anything is coming after them. Um, yeah whispering uh, mantras and prayers. 20 minutes pass, and suddenly you hear a voice, a woman's voice from the car radio. No, not the swamp. I don't want to, I don't want to. You both jump as it surprises you, and the pale naked woman is suddenly on the road just in front of you. What the? I want you then to roll act under pressure. I'm going straight through her. Yeah. Um, I rolled uh, uh, yeah, a 12, and um, I'm not letting up, no breaks. I'm, I'm going right through her. She seems to become this uh, cloud of insects just as you're about to hit her. And uh, the car loses the grip as she, uh, it goes past the woman. As the, the car starts to fly sideways into a tree, and you both have to roll endure injury with a minus two penalty. Seven. Ten. Dan. I'll take the critical wound. As you crash into the tree, uh, your chest is crushed up against the steering wheel. Francis, you get uh, a serious wound in your left arm as you're thrown around in the back seat. Oh, it's God. not broken or anything, but it will be hard to use it for a while. You can't use the car to drive away from here. It's uh, stuck in the tree and that uh, woman is, uh, she's gone. There's silence again. What do you do? Dan, you are spitting up blood. Oh, God. <clears throat> Dan? Dan, are you okay? Dan? That's Vicky. Francis will get up, uh, grab it onto his left arm, and kind of leans forward to look at Vicky. She seems okay. How are you doing, Dan? I'm hurt. Oh, all right, we got to get out of here. Yep. Yeah, grab my hand. He will whisper a prayer. Dear God, you, you watch out for the broken, the downtrodden. If I can be like you, just use me, Lord. Please, God. And, and as he, he does, you, you kind of feel that elation within Dan as Francis kind of grits his teeth as a little bit of blood drips from his mouth as he falls back into the, the chair in the back seat, starts coughing. <laughs> Where do you channel the wound? He will channel it to himself. There's really no other place to put it. Dan, your wound is uh, stabilized, and uh, Francis, you get a critical wound in your chest. Yeah, he's like, oh, God. <laughs> Francis, what did you do? This is whatever the Lord commanded me to do. All right, come on. Um, and then I'm, I'll help both of them out. I'll probably have to crawl over Vicky to get out the other side and then pull her out, lay her down, and then help Francis out and uh, get everybody sat down on the ground so that we can just rest here for a minute. 
Francis seems really, really injured. And as you are sitting there, uh, you hear that voice from the car radio again. I'm in a little boxes. He put me in little boxes. <laughs> the woman's voice echoes from the car radio, then silence. Somewhere on the other side of the swamp, next to the car that you now see, a flute can be heard, playing a sad melody. You don't see the pale woman around. The dirt road continues through the swamp. What do you do? Dan, why are we doing? We're just trying to find a way home, Francis. We're in Sweden. I don't think we're going to make it. I go home. And just get me to a fucking city and I will get us home. Um, <clears throat> all right. Can you walk? Yeah, I think so. I think I can do it. Can Vicky walk? Yeah. Um, we're just going to have to continue on foot. What, what did you, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> I wanted to be a chef. Really? Yeah. Why? I, I love to cook. My whole family was very food oriented. Mom liked to cook, you know, <laughs> big family dinners. And so cooking just was made people happy. I liked making people happy. You make uh, Vicky happy? I think so. <laughs> At least I used to. Now, I don't know. I don't think she would have be in this mess if she hadn't bumped into me. I don't think you would be in this mess. Did, uh... How'd you... How'd you come to know Vicky? Well, you could probably tell from her accent. She's not from America. Oh, yeah. That's kind of gave it away a little bit. She didn't have the resources to get herself legalized and with the atmosphere in our country... Um, I helped her out. I can do some things, you know, yeah. back doors on the computer to get her the paperwork she needed. So I did that. It seems like you're doing everything to help her. She's a good oh, person. I guess that makes you a good person. I, I think I'm just a good judge of character. I think you're a good person and she's a good person and helping you too makes me good. So I, uh, I hope that's the case. You married? No. Is there anyone you love? I love my freedom. You know, I always thought uh, I'd be in a better place by now. Uh, I, you know, Francis, in the work that I did, I already knew that most of what you see out here is a lie anyways. It's a real shame growing up blind in this world. I thought I could live with most of it. Yeah. This is This is starting to get out of hand. I remember my, my dad, he was so proud when I got accepted at... Uh, Liberty University. I think beyond the degree and everything, the job, it's that was probably the best moment of my life, seeing him happy. I'm sure he's still happy. I'm a youth pastor. Why would he be happy about that? It's nothing. It's a start. You could be leading congregations of thousands someday. Play your cards right. <laughs> or I could be dead by tomorrow. Ah, see, now you, now I know you've been hanging out with me too long. <laughs> the sun is uh, coming up. At the break of light, you come God. out from the, from the swamp. You see a paved road in front of you. A sign on the other side reads, Kiruna 12. You start to walk. Far away behind you, you hear the woman's voice. No! <laughs> Don't beat me here! Please, 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 please. Oh my god. It fades away. After a few minutes, you hear a large truck behind you, and you see the lights in the distance getting closer and closer. What do you do? Maybe we can get a ride. Yeah, um, here, move, move everybody off to the side of the road, and, um, All right. sort of hold my hand out to, uh, flag him down. The truck stops 
and the passenger door opens. As you get in, you see that the driver is a young girl, maybe 25 years old. She says something in Swedish. Bil problem. Uh, do you speak English? We need to get this man to a hospital. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, car problem. Yeah, we wrecked yeah. back there. Oh, uh, get in, get in. Uh, we are not far from Kiruna. You can get help there. I'm gonna help Francis in first, then yeah. Vicky, and then I'll get in. It's a large truck with a trailer. I'm going as far as Kiruna. You can get help there. I didn't see any car. What happened? Another very special thanks to our friend Mitchell Wallace from Helmgast. Thanks, Mitchell, for playing Francis. You do so good. Thank you for listening to The Experiment, a Cult Divinity Lost actual play podcast from TTRP Theater featuring Peter Samuelson, Minta Krikomi, and myself, Curtis Wilkins. The game, Cult Divinity Lost, is produced by Homecast. Music used in this episode is thanks to Koak and Incompetech. Find our other stories live on Twitch or later on YouTube. Podcasts are available on multiple platforms. If you like what you heard today and would like to help support and improve TTRP Theater, visit our Patreon page today. Benefits start for as little as $1. Thanks again from Minta. Peter, and myself, and all of us here at TTRP Theatre.